Rancho Palos Verdes, founded 40 years ago, is the peninsula's beautiful and youngest city. It is paradise, as I keep saying. You know, we live in paradise. Why would we want to do anything else? What's not to love in RPV? You know, you have uh, uh, the coastline, the beaches, the trails, the preserve, the school system, the neighborhoods, the people, the views. It just goes, you know, the list goes on and on. The story of Rancho Palos Verdes is fascinating. Long before the city formed, the Tongva Indians, Spanish explorers, cattle ranchers, and farmers all lived off the land. It was a promised land sought out by New York investor Frank Vanderlip, who bought the entire peninsula sight unseen a hundred years ago. He did buy this peninsula sight unseen, and he came out here in a private railroad car with his family to, to see it. He basically took a, a car and they came over the top of the hill and there was nothing out here and it was just absolutely beautiful. Vanderlip built his famous villa estate in Portuguese Bend. He died in 1937 before carrying out his grand vision for the peninsula. His family sold most of the property, leaving behind landmarks and a legacy. The story of the Vanderlip family here is really well, we've got all this land, how do, how do we make it useful? How do we do something with it? The landscape on the hill was rapidly changing. By 1957, there were three peninsula cities. The time had come to form the fourth. The community feared massive high-rise developments along the coast in the remaining unincorporated area controlled by LA County. So in 1962, a peninsula-wide movement began to obtain local control and incorporate RPV. It was a total community peninsula-wide effort. They were very concerned about the fact that the development plans in the unincorporated area were gonna be very, very high density, completely out of keeping with what the rest of the peninsula was. And it would really ruin the peninsula. The League of Women Voters, the PV Peninsula Advisory Council, and the group Save Our Coastline joined forces with the residents. Rolling Hills Mayor Fred Hess and activists Dorothy LeConte and Gordon Curtis, who have since passed, were then considered the masterminds behind the effort. And these were three of the women who played major roles. My main role, I, I became secretary of the uh, uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula Advisory Council uh, when they um, formed uh, because I was one of the few women there and then um, uh, from secretary then they said well you'll take care of the newspapers or two of course <laughs> so my role was to um, get the news into the newspapers uh, as frequently as we possibly could so that we could uh, let everybody know what was happening at the county level. It just was exciting to realize that there was something we could try do. We had to raise the consciousness of a lot of people. People were very determined. Everybody, Barbara and Betty talk about the excitement. I really think about the determination of everybody. They were not going to give up for any reason. Despite years of roadblocks with the county and developers, a state Supreme Court ruling finally paved the way for a cityhood election. On August 28, 1973, residents voted overwhelmingly to incorporate and elected the first city council. It was a very exciting time, and uh, the, um, I guess the, the, the gods were with us. On September 7, 1973, Rancho Palos Verdes was officially incorporated, and the first city council was sworn in. They elected five of us on a city council. Myself, Marilyn Ryan, Bob Ryan, no relation, uh, Gunther Burke, and Dave Cisco Ruth. We were the original council. I think the biggest challenge for the first city council was keeping faith with the electorate. Over 80% of the community, of those who voted, voted for cityhood. And this is unheard of for a brand new city. The basic goal was local control. We won that. And a testament to the success is very simply this. We had just over 42,000 people in 1973. 40 years later, with local control and no high density, 
Our population is just a little over 43,000. It's important to honor all the city founders and leaders, remembering those who are no longer with us and those who continue to serve. In our general plan, we have a low density city, and I think that is the key to keeping the founders' dream alive. And we have abundance of open space. We have beautiful views, we have open space. I very, very much rely on the relationships that I've got with some of the original founders to help me steer uh, uh, what we do today on the council along the lines that, that I think people really envisioned us being 40 years ago when the city was, was founded. In 2013, RPV is 40 and fabulous. As for the future, preserving the dream continues. I think it's a celebration of, of preserving a quality of life. Uh, and I think that's something that many people, many communities are fighting to struggle to hold on to. Um, and um, I think uh, we can celebrate the fact that we have a very good quality of life in this city. You know, the thing I love most about Rancho Palos Verdes is a sense of community. Uh, we have such a strong sense of community in my neighborhood and I think throughout the city. I'm really honored and we are really blessed to be here in Rancho Palos Verdes.